So RetroArch is probably uh, my favorite emulator. If you've been watching the tutorials at, at, you know, for any length of time, you'll know that I recommend it quite often. And that is because I do find it to be one of the best emulators out there quite earnestly. I, I do admit though that it has some UX and UI decisions that I probably wouldn't have, have made and it does make for a slightly more confusing experience with RetroArch, but I really do feel that it has the best and most options available per system or even just options that can carry across every system. Settings that you set up in NES will carry to SNES, to N64, to PS1, to GBA, to whatever you want to emulate with RetroArch. And that is fantastic to a certain extent. And what do you want to do if you have uh, specific settings that you need for one system and specific settings that you need for another, but you don't need those settings for any other system? Well, that is where custom configs comes into play. Hi, my name is Brad, and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to use custom configs in RetroArch and the method that I believe to be the best and most powerful method in terms of getting your settings to be system specific. So first thing is first, if you have never dealt with RetroArch or LaunchBox for that matter, then you should probably go ahead and take a look at our SNES tutorial. It's a beginner tutorial that assumes nothing and it really walks you through from step pretty much zero from, you know, LaunchBox and RetroArch and kind of walks you through and how to combine the two experiences. So you do need a little bit more of an understanding. And even in that tutorial, I did cover custom configs, uh, but it's a little convoluted. It's, you know, adding more steps to an already lengthy tutorial, hence the breakout tutorial for this specific feature set. So specifically, we will be taking a look at the config folder the most in this tutorial. Now back over in LaunchBox, assuming you have your games imported, you have RetroArch set up for the systems that you would want it to be set up for, and you are otherwise good to go. Let's take a look on how to create a custom config. So personally, myself, I have a special uh, USB N64 controller that I would rather use when I play N64 games. Now, it's not the nicest controller really, uh, and you can get N64 to USB converters if you want to use a real N64 controller. And there's an awesome Hori pad that was made for the original N64. And then there's also the method of taking an N64 pad and replacing the uh, control stick with a GameCube control stick. All really good methods, but I'm personally just using a RetroLink USB third-party controller. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Bomberman 64. So the game's gonna load. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my controller in to a USB port. We're gonna press F1 to open up this menu. And if you are using 1.36, the latest stable version, then you're gonna be using your arrow keys and Z and X to navigate for forward and backwards in these submenus. And some things are gonna be a little bit changed around for you. However, if you are on the latest nightly like I am, and I, I suggest that people be on the latest nightly, there's no reason not to. You can use your arrow keys with enter and backspace, or you can actually just use your mouse. And I, I think that's actually pretty cool also. But let's go ahead and create a new config. So I do have my controller that I wanna set up. So let's go down to configurations. We're going to save new configuration and you're going to see that it's saved new config to retroarch.cfg. Uh, real quick, uh, for whatever reason, Retroarch decided to label that my new config was labeled retroarch.cfg. I was a little confused by this, so I looked in real quick. No, it did name it after the core and that's what it's supposed to do. I don't know if that's a, a weird small bug, but it is generally supposed to name the new config you create you know, after the core you have loaded. And since I have the Gloopin64 
Core Loaded. It named it Glupin64 underscore libretro.cfg. So we are going to go ahead and copy that entire name. Back in Launchbox, we're going to go to Tools, Manage Emulators. We're going to go down to RetroArch. We're going to go to the Associated Platforms tab, and I'm going to go down to where it says Nintendo 64, and you can see here that I've got the dash L command to load the Gloopin 64 core. I'm going to double click this space. I'm going to press space. I'm going to add dash C, quotations, config, backslash, and then I'm going to paste in the entire name, including .cfg, and quotations, and then I'm going to click OK. We're going to close out. We're going to relaunch our game. We're going to press F1, go down to configurations, and where it says load configuration here on the right, it now says Gloopin64 underscore lipretro.cfg, meaning it has loaded our custom config. With our custom config loaded, we're going to go right, we're going to go down to input, and then we're going to go down to input user one bind. Now, for whatever reason, uh, my controller is not showing up. Normally, you would select your controller in the device index. However, uh, when I press enter for so user one B button and I press B on my controller, it still sets it to see the numbers next to NA. That still means it's set and I'm using my controller right now to navigate the UI in RetroArch. So, I'm a little confused when it comes to that right now, <laughs> but uh, but that doesn't really matter in this moment. My point is to show you that I've got my very specific and custom controller uh, set up for uh, the N64. So we're going to go back. We're going to go back to this first screen. We're going to go down to configurations. We're going to save current config. And you have to do this every time you, you save uh, a certain setting that you want to change or you need to go over to the right, go down to configuration and make sure that save configuration on exit is set. This way, every time you exit uh, RetroArch, uh, your config is just going to automatically save if you've changed anything. So that's good. Make sure you do one of the two. And if we resume gameplay, you can see here that uh, my controller is working. So there we go. Okay, so just to illustrate the difference, I've got, you know, N64 set up with my custom config for my N64 controller, and we are going to illustrate the loading of different configs. So I'm going to load up PS1 here. I plugged in my PS4 controller. So there we go. It is loaded up. So let's go down to configurations. You can see here that I have my regular RetroArch.cfg loaded. Windows 10, you need to shut up right now. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go right. We're going to go down to input. We're going to go down to input user one binds. You can see here that my X input controller user one is set up and that it automatically has been pre-configured for me. So you can see here that it's, it's working. So with that having been loaded, you can see that my RetroArch.cfg was, you know, configured. We're going to reopen Bomberman 64. And in the input area, you can see that my buttons for my uh, N64 USB controller are still activated. And you can see that auto there is for the PS4 controller. So it's actually kept my N64 custom configuration and in the gaps where I, I never set anything you can see that it's auto pre-configured something because those were left empty. So you can see there that uh, it's an interesting thing that really happens with when you use custom configs and this does go beyond just you know things like controllers it could control any of the video options shader options sound options i mean it really does you know control every or hold rather every setting or option in retroarch i do find that it has its biggest use with controllers if you have multiple controllers but you can use it for various other setups uh, like like shaders 
Uh, if you want to apply a, a 2D specific shader to some systems, but you don't want that shader to be applied to other systems, that would be a good way to achieve that goal, is using custom configs. So there you go. That is how you use custom configs inside of RetroArch and LaunchBox. Now, of course, obviously you don't need custom configs, but they do offer some really awesome customization options that you can set, you know, without a custom config, but the custom config really does make it a whole lot easier. If you liked this tutorial and it helped you out at all, then please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this tutorial, if I need to clarify anything that I've kind of gone over, or you need any help whatsoever, then leave your comment in the comment section below. Jason and myself are more than happy to answer any questions that you may have about LaunchBox. If you are a Patreon producer, then your name is now scrolling up on screen, and thank you very much for pledging to us at that level every month. If you'd like to see your name up on that credits list or within LaunchBox, or you would like to get other exclusive perks, then head on over to our Patreon link in the description below and pledge at least $2 to start getting something like early access to shows like RSS and other perks at higher tiers. My name is Brad. The link to my channel is in the description below. I do lots of gaming content, so if that sounds like your cup of tea, head on over there and give me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!